I have a question. Are you a cat person or a dog person? If you're a dog person, yay! I love dogs, they're super cute. I have two of my own. But we are going to be talking about cats. How many of you have been bitten by a cat? What about scratched by a cat? Who's allergic to cats? I'm all three. Fickle, moody, unamused, selfish, and vicious. These are all words used to describe cats. So how can nearly half of us continue to invite these little psychopaths into our lives and homes? There must be a reason, right? Dog people, I'm sure you can also relate. There must have been a time when your dog woke you up too early or ruined your favorite stuffed toy. But we are going to be talking about cats. Studies in South Australia and New Zealand have discovered and identified five different cat personality traits based on what we understand as humans. Using this knowledge, we are now able to understand domestic cats easier than we ever could before. Neurotic, dominant, impulsive, extroverted and agreeable. No, I'm not talking about your little sibling. These are known as the feline five. These are all traits that scientists have agreed cats consistently have in common. Now, I want to talk about these five traits as we understand them human to human. We've all been told to use the golden rule at at least once in our lives. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Simple stuff. Or it should be, yet here we are, many of us still dealing with peer pressure, bullying and countless other human interactions that are meant to create division. Cats don't know about the golden rule, and yet, despite our obvious differences, we are still able to coexist with and, dare I say, love them. Neurotic. Neurotic shows shyness, insecurity, fearfulness, suspicion, and depression. Experiencing neuroticism might make you feel angry, sad, irritated, lonely, guilty, and vulnerable. I can't tell for sure what my cat is thinking or feeling, but I can pick up on some certain physical cues, such as if he's arching his back up, his ears are back, his claws are out, there could be some hissing. I know I probably shouldn't go over, pick him up and try to give him a hug. <laughs> yeah, he'd rip my face off. Instead, I should try to follow his eye line and identify what is making him feel so insecure. Then I can get to some problem solving. With humans, we tend to put our hands over our faces or over our bodies in a protective and defensive stance. And just like I would do with my cat, I can either leave them be or gently approach them and see if I can be of any way and any help. Dominance. Dominance is having control over or protecting yourself and your belongings. Cats are very, very dominant over their land and environment. They often mark it with their scent in order to protect it. I can tell when my cat's feeling rather dominant. You see, my dogs, Watson and Albert, they have the tendency to run right at my cat's face because they want to play. Now, my cat will give warnings that, that they're entering dangerous territory, such as hissing or raising a paw with his claws out. Now, I have several options here. I can either let the animals hash it out themselves, which will probably, no, most definitely result in one or more animals being injured, thus a trip to the vets. Or I could remove both dogs from their unintentional death wish. My cat would feel safe again and my dogs would be uninjured. It's a win-win. We humans don't typically assert our dominance with scent like cats do, but we do show other signs, such as how you stand yourself, your tone, facial expressions, how much eye contact is being given, how firm your handshake is, and so on. We can either use these clues to solve potential conflict or embrace it. Impulsiveness. Impulsiveness is on the completely opposite side of the track. This is your fun and crazy side of you, the part of you that's more reckless than the rest. For cats, this is their wild and predator side, the part of them that enjoys the thrill of the hunt and the joy of the strike. Now we've all seen a cat push things off a table. Now this could be purely out of spite, but it's more than likely just impulse. Scientifically, this is how we know the world is round, because if it was flat, cats would have just pushed everything off by now. We all have that one friend who acts before thinking. Now this can sometimes be rather problematic for the rest of us. 
but we are still able to have a happy and healthy relationship with them if we can create boundaries and learn to anticipate how their actions will affect us. Extrovertedness. Extrovertedness is one of my favorites. It relies on being mentally or physically active. You might also say cunning, curious, inquisitive, inventive, and playful. When my cat's in a playful mood, he will oftentimes follow the movement of my feet or meow at nothing. I play with him or else I lose my feet. If I stop entertaining him before he's ready, then he just keeps bugging me. Similarly, extroverted people need to seek excitement and social activities. An extroverted human might need to do something wild and crazy that makes them stand out in the crowd, such as jumping into a pool at a party when no one is meant to be swimming, or stealing the mic from the DJ at a wedding. Now, this kind of behavior is fun until it's not. Understanding an extroverted person will enable me to make an informed decision on the activities we do together, knowing that we might have different needs. But we are still talking about cats, right? Agreeableness. Agreeableness is a whole nother story. This is about affection, friendliness, and gentleness. Cats can sometimes take a while to get used to their humans. It's well known that the high, harder animals to love and make them love you back, which is why so many people give up on them. But they do have a softer side. Although cats are independent and enjoy solitude, they still need the love of another. They might rub up against your leg, purr, or show their honor and respect by bringing in a surprise. A small creature from the back garden. It's disgusting, but it's their way of saying, Thank you. We humans tend to show our love through songs, poetry, or even through a, a simple hug. But not everyone likes writing music or hugging other people. And because of this, we must exercise awareness. Just because someone's boundaries are different from our own, it does not mean they're unagreeable. It, does, it just means that we need to be more empathetic and not force people to conform to our own expectations. I have learned to navigate the stormy weathers that are my cat's moods, much like I'm learning to listen to the needs of my friends and family. I love my cat and my friends, and because I want them in my life, I'm willing to put in the effort that it takes to care for them and their sometimes silent needs. Oftentimes, I find that people give up on one another because they aren't able to agree. They allow their differences to divide instead of finding a way to come together. We need to exercise awareness and recognize that our family and friends all deal with things differently. Just like my cat, not everyone has the power, the courage, or even the ability to stand up and speak up for themselves. We must make more of an effort to find empathy so that we can all come together. If we can achieve this with cats, then we can absolutely make this work for humans. It's just one small step into making people feel loved, safe, and understood around you. And just like the golden rule says, Treat others and cats the way you want to be treated. Thank you.